Who built the Boro Bodor? One of the largest yet most infrequently academically shared Buddhist monuments in the world. Supposedly built within the 8th century AD, it ranks as one of the greatest archaeological sites of Asia, if not the world. We have on many occasions covered seemingly unexplainable enormous ancient monuments and ruins that we feel are attributed to a more modern inhabitant who, according to the same academic study, were undoubtedly severely lacking the capability to complete such builds. In other words, we believe that due to the inexplicable nature of their construction, and indeed often the scale of the stonework involved in these sites, they were instead seen as an advantageous place to re-inhabit. In doing so, these piggyback cultures created their own illusions of power. Obviously, claiming they built such awe-inspiring, intimidating structures would have immediately put any native adversary or any invading party on the back foot. A daunting task for any of our ancestors, merely armed with swords and catapults to have invaded. Sites such as the Great Pyramids, Sacsayhuaman, Kulap, or any other incredibly well-constructed ancient fortress or structure would have provided a superior level of security, a ready-built sanctuary, allowing their people to flourish and, in turn, giving our modern academia a culprit to pin the constructions to. Additionally, the religious idols, the artistically illustrated belief systems, and any leftover technologies would have been adopted by these people. Thus, we strongly suspect that religions such as Buddhism was in fact left to us by a highly advanced lost civilization, translated and embraced by our more modern ancestors. This adaptation of belief systems has conveniently allowed the furthering of the agenda of academia, yet the structure's inexplicable features are merely ignored by this group rather than ever explain, this due to them simply incapable of explaining such constructions. This long list of worldwide unexplained anomalies, which grows in depth every day, is one of the main reasons why most of our taught history, we feel, is now obviously a lie. In truth, no one actually knows who built Baro Bador. They do not know when Baro Bador was built. And most important of all, they have no clue how it was built. The unexplained features within Baro Bador are greater in number than almost any other ancient site on Earth, and we suspect this to be the reason why it is rarely shared publicly. Yet, its past importance has not been overlooked by the modern world. Baro Bador, since knowledge of his existence was sparked in 1814, by Sir Thomas Ramford Raffles, then the British ruler of Java, who was informed of its existence and location by native Indonesians. Furthermore, speculation about an ancient lake which once surrounded Baro Bador was the subject of intense debate during the 20th century. In 1931, a Dutch artist and scholar of Hindu and Buddhist architecture, W.O.J. Nieuwenkamp, developed a hypothesis that the Kedu Plain which surrounds the pyramidal structure, was once a lake, with Borobador created to appear as a lotus flower floating on the water. We strongly believe that Borobador, along with its curious architecture, is one of the most enigmatic, as yet unexplained, ancient site on Earth. And as such, highly compelling. Hey guys, so in 1999, engineer and all-around good guy, John J. Williams found something that has become a very important find, known as the Enigmalif. He was hiking in North America when he noticed something odd about a boulder lying on the ground. Upon closer inspection, John discovered that the rock appeared to have three metal prongs protruding from its center. Finding this rather odd like anyone would, John collected the rock up and took it home. Now, it must be said, John J. Williams is one of those endearing characters that is not easily fooled. Knowing, as the perceptive person that he is, that an authentic, out-of-place artifact that according to modern understanding shouldn't exist are the types of relics that regularly go missing, with many people attempting to get their hands on it. John has guarded this artifact so well, in fact, he even refuses to give away the location in which he found it. 
Thanks to John's protective nature, the Enigmalith, also known as the Petrodox, is still in the public arena. A device that has the undeniable aspect of an electrical component, which ended up embedded into solid granite, stone composed of quartz and feldspar with small traces of mica. Williams has received offers up to half a million dollars for the device, but he refuses to sell it. Williams stated that the artifact, however, is available to any researchers for analysis. So far, only a few individuals have taken the time, or the risk to their funding, to study the mysterious object. According to these studies, the Petrodox is not an accretion, concretion, pumice, or a fossil. It does not contain any known resins, cement, glues, adhesives, limestone, mortar, or other binding agents. In other words, this baby is an authentic bona fide rock, which a long time ago formed around the electrical component. According to geological analysis, researchers believe that the rock is at least 100,000 years old, which should be impossible when the object embedded in it is of artificial origin. The device has been compared by some researchers to an electronic XLR connector, or similar component. The artifact has a very weak magnetic attraction. Readings indicate either an open circuit or very high impedance between the pins. Williams has not allowed the object to be broken in half for analysis, but X-ray tests have shown that the artifact has a mysterious, quote, opaque internal structure in the center of the stone. Skeptics firmly state, but at a distance, that this 100,000-year-old electrical component is a manufactured hoax, but Williams does not agree and welcomes studies of it. Williams is convinced that he has found a genuine artifact that belonged to an advanced ancient civilization or an extraterrestrial race. He is willing to let researchers authenticate the artifact under certain conditions, that he is present during the analysis, and that the rock remains unharmed. Thanks to his diligence, this is a rare out-of-place artifact, which is still in the realm of public scrutiny. As always, thanks for watching guys, and until next time, take care. Human history is staunched with the use of masks in countless ways, for unlimited purposes. From ordainhood to hunting to death, masks have permeated the entirety of history. Their close relation to our lives has even allowed them to stay relevant to the present day. And with the addition to medical discovery and technological developments, their usage has become a necessity. Often used in the arts as a synonym of disguise, found within stories of villainy versus heroism, even portrayed as possessing magical powers. But I digress. The artifact in focus on this video is one which we feel is of particular significant historical importance. Known as the Mycenaean Death Mask of Agamemnon, it was discovered by German archaeologist Heinrich Schliemann. Yet, it must be noted, under certain controversies. Having already discovered the location of the legendary Troy, Schielmann's next expedition was to discover the final resting place of Agamemnon, the king of Mycia, the person who legendarily led the Greek forces during the Trojan War. However, many have come forward after looking into his work, claiming that there is no way he discovered this long-lost tomb. Thus, the true identity of the original owner of this mask is now a hotly debated topic. The named Mask of Agamemnon is clearly not the most visually stunning ever found, King Tut's death mask holding that title for many. However, the fact that it exists in its primitive form, and of such a substantial weight, leads us to believe that whichever ancient civilization created this mask a very long time ago, and whoever it was for, had impressive power, probably at a time just post-Stone Age. According to Heinrich Schliemann, according to Pausanias, there were so-called underground chambers of Atreus in Mycenae. We have in the past covered the astonishing architecturally advanced design of the treasury of Atreus, its enormous lintel and glass-like perfection of the blocks laid within at the time of its creation. Yet these so-called underground chambers supposedly hide treasures of enormous proportions. Could this ancient mask 
be just a fragment of one of these legendary hordes. When he found these fragments of what we suspect to be larger treasures, he stated, quote, The mask was made of a thick sheet of near pure gold, which was then hammered against a wooden background. A sharp tool was used to then chisel the finer details. The mask depicts the face of a man with an oblong face, wide forehead, long fine nose, and tightly closed thin lips. Details of the eyebrows, mustache, and beard are visible. Near the ears, two holes were made so that the mask could be held over the deceased's face. Of the five masks I found, this was the only mask showing a bearded man," said Schliemann. Thus, his conclusion was that it had belonged to Agamemnon. We find the mask's existence, regardless of the claimed previous owner, and, indeed, the legends of still lost treasure, highly compelling.